what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel today Shamili and I have a really cool video for you guys to check out we're going to be installing the next base 622 GW dash cam along with the rear window camera a cabin view camera and we also have the dash cam hardwire kit so I'm kind of a tech geek so I get pretty excited about these types of things a lot of times you get a dash cam and it's loaded with features but you end up not really using those this is an exception here and I'm going to show you why so before we get started I do want to send a special thank you to next base for sending these products out to us for review I did some research on dash cams because I wanted to do an upgrade in Chamelia's car and the one that kept popping up was this next base 622 GW so it kind of sparked my interest and I reached out to them and sure enough they responded same day in a couple of hours and said yeah sure we'd love to send it to you got it to us in a few days and here we are so we're going to be breaking this video up into chapters so if there's anything specific that you want to see you can click down there and just skip ahead as needed we're going to be doing some video tests some audio tests everything we can think of uh show you the dash cam hardwire kit that's something i really like so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into it when you first open the box you'll see the quick start guide that you want to make sure that you read thoroughly a notification telling you where to get the firmware upgrade and a warning sticker letting people know that your car is protected by next base opening the box you'll see a qr code where you can go to get the most up-to-date instructions for the camera looking further in the box we get the next base dash cam a click and go pro gps mount a 12 to 24 volt power cable a usb cable a spare window mount a power cable fitting tool and finally a notice letting you know that you need to charge this camera up for at least two hours indoors before using it in the car the dash cam has a small piece of blue film covering the lens and there's also a piece of film covering the main screen of the camera the mounting point also has a cover that you will need to remove in order to mount the camera and it is worth noting that this camera does not include an sd card next base recommends that you use one of their cards for maximum compatibility the next base cabin view camera includes a quick start guide and that's pretty much it you're going to find that this is one of the best accessories that you can use on a dash cam mainly because of its ease of use you simply plug it into the side of the dash cam and that's pretty much it so this camera is going to give you a 140 degree view so you're going to be able to see inside the cabin of the vehicle as well as outside the side windows so you get complete coverage the next base rear window camera includes a 6.5 meter cable the quick start guide and an extra strip of adhesive for mounting the camera so as i mentioned the 622 gw does come with a 12 volt connector that you can just plug into your cigar lighter however we're going to go ahead and hardwire this and the next base dash cam hardwire kit makes this extremely simple it includes three different types of fuse taps so compatibility shouldn't be an issue a ferret core which basically is going to help eliminate any fm interference and the cable itself is five meters long or about 16 feet so this is going to give us a much cleaner look on the install right now Shamilia actually has her dash cam plugged into the cigar lighter we're going to be able to do away with that uh, tidy it up a little bit it's going to look real good so let's go ahead and jump into the installation all right, y'all, so at this point, we've already updated the firmware on the dash cam. There's three different ways that you could do the update, and I'll tell y'all about those real quick. So the first option that you have to install in the update is gonna be using the mobile app. The second option is by connecting the dash cam to your PC or your Mac and use the My Next Base player to install the update. And finally, the third option that you have is to install the SD card directly into your PC or Mac and simply copy the files over. Then you will connect the camera using the My Next Base player and then the update is going to begin. But of course, you can find complete instructions on how to perform the updates on the Next Base website.
so this is the end product this is the fuse tap right here you take the fuse out of the fuse box plug it into the slot on the fuse tap and then plug the fuse tap back into where that fuse was and then I have the ground wire up here all right so now we have everything hooked up we just need to make sure that power is actually getting to the dash cam when the car is powered on so I'm gonna go ahead put it in accessory mode and as you can see it's powering up all right so we're good to go with power now I'm gonna go ahead and mount it I just wanted to find exactly where I want to mount it so that it's not too high or too low um, she has a tent strip on her car, so I'm going to see if I can get the uh, lens to go below it. So let me work with this for a bit, and then we'll get everything buttoned up. Alright guys, so one real nice thing about this camera is that you have options. We decided to go full time with the rear camera, so that's what you see plugged in right here. But if you want to use the cabin view camera, you can do that as well. You just simply have to unplug this wire here. So we're going to unplug this and for now I'm just going to tuck it up here and simply plug it into the side and we're all set to use that now. Now the nice thing about this cabin view camera is that you're still going to be able to capture out of the rear back window but you're also going to get the sides. It's not going to be as detailed a view as the rear camera. But, you know, it still provides some coverage. So if you're an Uber driver or Lyft driver or something like that, or you have kids or whatever reason you want to film the inside cabin, you're not really missing out on the features of the rear camera. You're just not getting as detailed a view. So this is a good option, but essentially you'll want to make your decision based off of your needs. So you can either choose the rear camera or this one. Now, another really nice feature of these cameras are that they use magnetic attachments to hold. So if you want to remove this camera, you can simply pull it, take it off. And as you can see, this is where it attaches. The rear camera mounts uh, pretty much the same way, except there's no clips or anything like that. The camera shaped like a ball and it just magnetizes to the holder and you can rotate it, tilt it as needed. The lens is actually polarized and you can adjust it by turning this dial right here on the front. And the instruction manual also gives you a guide on how to properly adjust this. So now when I'm ready to attach the camera back, I just simply align it and it snaps into place. All right guys, so now what I'm gonna do is go into the My Next Based app and I'm going to adjust some of the settings. So I'm just gonna click on My Next Base. As you can see, the camera is actually connected already. And I'm gonna click in the upper left-hand corner here, go to My Dash Cam, the drop-down for settings. You can also check for updates here and do an analysis on your SD card if you'd like. But I'm gonna click settings and there's a couple of things I wanna change. The first is I want the video length drop back down to one minute which I think was the default so I'm gonna do that that's gonna give us smaller clips and make it a little bit easier for me uh, to to work with the videos and final cut the time stamp is off uh, GPS stamp I'm gonna turn that off as well save that setting speed stamp we'll leave that on for right now dual files I'm going to actually turn this off basically what this does is it'll give you a high res and low quality video at the same time so the low quality videos um, they make it a lot easier to transfer and edit but for me I prefer the uh, high quality ones just because well I'm making a video for you guys and I want you to be able to get the best view of it so we're gonna go ahead and turn that off save the setting and this will save some space on the SD card as well so image stabilization is a nice feature I have it turned off it's off by default and I'm leaving it off mainly because I'm filming at a higher resolution 4k so if you turn this on you will get more stable video but your resolution will drop some it's still gonna be pretty high quality though so it's probably a setting that the majority of people may want to go ahead and use couple of driver assistance features here reversing camera don't really need that the car has it what three words is a feature you can use to help um, locate you in the event of an emergency 
there's a screen saver up here uh, we're gonna leave that off for right now so parking mode is a great feature it basically allows the dash cam to go into standby and anytime it senses a bump against the car it basically uses the, the uh, G sensor to recognize any bumps it'll go ahead and start recording and you can read through this section here if you're interested in completely how it works and also refer to the user manual if you want to change the video resolution you can also do that here as well these are the different resolutions that you can film at you can do 1440p at 60 frames per second if you'd like exposure seems to be pretty good right now I'm going to drop it by two I just want to see what it's gonna look like if it makes it any better we'll do a SD card analysis real quick just to show you what that looks like so it shows you how much is used you can format the SD card from here if you'd like gives you different information on the card uh, check for updates we should be up to date yep so it shows you the firmware that you're using and that's pretty much it that's what I wanted to use another awesome feature is Amazon Alexa you can actually use Alexa with your dash cam so Alexa is a really nice feature to have when you're on the go so that you don't have to worry about manually adjusting a lot of different settings you can also place calls and play music through Alexa and it'll play through your car stereo as normal So hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I don't have the in-cabin camera hooked up right now. I'm using the uh, rear dash cam. Her windshield is a bit dirty as well, so I'll clean that off when I get home and uh, get her to do some more testing with it. Right now, I just mainly want to see how the camera performs in different shadings. I'm trying to go in and out of the sun in the uh, shade a little bit just to see how the exposure and everything is working for us. The install was pretty pretty straightforward. I mean, it, the, you know, the hardest part is just dealing with those panels. It's not really a huge deal, but can be a little bit time consuming so here we're going straight on into the sun so that'll give you a good idea of what that looks like and how well the uh, camera handles it man let me uh, clean her windshield off a little bit here turn the air off now open the sunroof up and we're gonna go ahead and crack the uh, passenger and driver side windows a little bit just to see how it picks up the audio
So now let's go ahead and move into our final thoughts on the next base 622 GW dash cam. So after spending some time riding around a little bit with the next base 622 GW, this is by far the most advanced and feature packed dash cam that I've ever used. The list of features is so extensive that it literally would take us hours to talk about and show everything on this camera. So I highly suggest going to the next base website and reading up on it if you're interested in learning more about this camera. Now this dash cam delivers crystal clear 4K footage. It does a great job at capturing audio even with the windows down and it's easy to take on the go courtesy of the magnetic attachment method. Parking mode and emergency SOS are convenient features and the Alexa integration allows you to control your dash cam using only your voice. How cool is that? The option of using the rear camera or the cabin view camera allows the flexibility to meet any needs. The My Next Base software and the mobile app both make it easy to adjust your settings, review your footage, and get a live view. We highly recommend this product and are definitely looking forward to seeing what innovations Next Base comes up with in the future. If you want to see more awesome reviews and automotive related content, be sure to subscribe. Click that like button and the notification bell so that you can be notified when we post new content. Thanks for all your support. See you on the next video.